Hi and welcome to another episode of Theatre World and I'm your host Tim Byron. Today's episode is going to focus on Sherbrooke Theatre Company's Play in a Day. Now, while most uh, theatre productions involve a play that's already written uh, and many, many nights, weeks, months of rehearsal and, what, 12, 15 productions, Play in a Day will focus on a play that's written, rehearsed, directed and performed in one day. So let's go see how they go about doing that. At 8 o'clock on the Friday night, around 50 eager actors, writers, directors congregate in the shed, ready to be instructed into the world of play in a day. The large group broke up into six teams and discussed their play, their characters and their props. At 10 o'clock after the actors had left for the night, the six playwrights were left, each to write their own short play by 6am the next morning. And at 2am in the morning, some writers found that it was chocolate cake and coffee that got them through the night. At 9am on the Saturday morning, everyone, except for the writers who were still fast asleep, reconvened at the Doncaster Secondary College Performance Centre. Six teams rehearsed in every nook and cranny as the teams had to rotate through rehearsing on the main stage. The pressure was also on the directors who had little time to be able to direct their actors. I'm sure these guys were rehearsing for Full Metal Jacket. And delivering lines is all about pacing. And pacing. And pacing. And sometimes, some boxer size. And the old adage is true. Nothing brings out actors like a free lunch. And after a long 24 hours of rehearsing, some people were showing signs of some instability. All right, I'm here with uh, Mark Collard. Mark, could you tell us, uh, start by telling us exactly what your title is here today? Uh, my title is Mr. Mr. Mark Collard, but I'm also one of the uh, organising committee of Plan A Day. And what does that involve? What are you doing today? Well, Plan A Day is uh, a unique concept in theatre in that we give a challenge to writers, directors and actors 24 hours to put together a 10 to 15 minute play. From nothing, from the time they all meet, um, through to 24 hours later, they go on stage and off they go. And what year number is this for Sherbrooke to do Play in a Day? Sherbrooke, uh, I think this is the eighth annual event for Play in a Day. Uh, we also joined with Mitcham Theatre Group before they folded. And then uh, within the eastern part of Melbourne, there are a few other theatre companies that also uh, took it on under the name of uh, Challenge 24. And is it a growing concept? I think there's 50 participants today. Is that, yeah. is that growing each year or are you trying to cap Absolutely. that? Absolutely. No, we had no trouble. I think within three days we filled all of the spots that we needed for the purposes of uh, Play in a Day. Yep. Um, but then I think it was only like four years ago we struggled and we only had about two or three actors per um, per team this year we had to add extra because we had so much interest and is this the the, the, the uh, maximum you'd like you wouldn't like it any bigger it'd be too hard to, to manage yeah, look, I think for 10 minutes on theatre it makes it quite a challenge for a writer to find roles for four or five or six people yeah. um, and, and the alternative is to make it longer and that just makes it more challenging for everybody so yeah we, we try to aim for about four or five performers one director one writer and it's a 
I, I, I see it as a very uh, daunting concept, and I've been scared just watching. Yeah. What would you say to anybody watching who's, who's thinking about, who's, um, whose interest has been piqued by this concept? What would you say to somebody? Oh, uh, give it a go. I mean, to be honest, it's under the, the realm of any theatre. This happens to be a unique challenge because it's you know, all compressed into 24 hours. You give up a day, basically, rather than over the course of two or three months in terms of your rehearsal. But uh, throw it out there. You're going to perform once in a play in a day. No one's going to know whether in fact that was scripted and um, you know you hope that it all works well but it is about you know having fun, getting people together and it's also honing a craft as well. Mark thank you for your time we'll let the uh, show begin. Ladies You're welcome. Thank you. It is my distinct pleasure on behalf of the Sherbrooke Theatre Company and also proudly supported by Bendigo Bank to welcome you to Play in a Day 2014. <laughs> You missed a spot. Where? There! Where? There! Well, I still don't see it. Look closer! David Lawson Smith, who's directing Much of Boots About Nothing. Now, David, uh, how do you cope being director of a play that you just got, uh, what, nine o'clock this morning? Yes. Uh, read it to start with and collaborate with your cast who may be seeing stuff you haven't yet picked up. Yes. Now, I've been watching all day and I have noticed it's a time for me to be a sycophant. I was really impressed with your directorial, directorial style. You're very patient, very um, giving and um, I really enjoyed that. Is that how you always direct or is, are you a bit more patient today because it's such a, a stressful short time frame? Uh, in uh, Play in a Day you have far more varied casts. You're not auditioning, uh, you're a signed cast so you may have a wide range of skills and experience. So yeah, you will have to be more patient for people who have done less theatre but of course that's part of the challenge too mm. and everybody can contribute and bring something to the play. Yeah. So what, what brings you to play in a day? What, what makes, is this your first time? No, this is my third. Third time. So what brings you back three times? What, what do you... I've really enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed creating something original with uh, local playwrights. That's a pleasure to do as well. And of course I'm meeting other theatre people who become friends, are friends and maybe will be friends. Now the play's about to start in a few minutes. You're, you're finished for now? It's all in the hands of the uh, actors now? Well, it's too late now. Uh, I could do it. I've done with more time. I, you can always probably say that for a play in a day. You can. David, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here with uh, Hayley Lawson-Smith. She's an author, singer, nanny, playwright, and she's Theatre World's own. Hayley, <laughs> thank you for joining us. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. That's all right. Now, Hayley's just uh, written, perhaps for playing a day. Now Hayley, the question Stephen King hates being asked is where do you get your ideas from? So I'm going to ask you where did you get your idea from for perhaps? Okay, it's actually a fairly easy answer for this one because they gave us a theme and the theme was fairy tales and instantly I thought of yay let's do fractured fairy tales. So I um I looked at traditional meanings of fairy tales and how they were used to scare children in particular little girls into being well behaved so I kind of put that into a modern setting and it worked well now did you well you were meant to stay up all night and write it did you do that I stayed up all night I didn't write all night what time did you finish 2 30 oh, well done and did you get some sleep no I watched a little bit of clockwork orange instead oh, good. 
Now, you got to spend some time with the actors before you started. Did you, do you take that into consideration when you wrote? Yes. Yes? No. No? Oh, good. <laughs> oh, well, no, we do talk to the actors and they give us some ideas. Um, but essentially, it's kind of hard getting ideas and then trying to make everybody happy. You kind of have to take... You know, you're there for so long by yourself. You can't please your actors all the time, but no, I think I made mine happy. Yeah. No. That note from the girls. I think I am to sleep. What were they thinking? What did they think about me when they wrote that note? <coughs> dear Mum, we're running away. What's this, dear Mum? Well, it's how you start a letter. Well, that's how I was starting this letter. <sighs> Mum, we're leaving. Goodbye. The end. But can't we just say, don't worry and we'll be safe? Sure. And Marie packed her snuggliest blankies and her nappies too. <laughs> Evie. Marie? <laughs> Look, can't we just say that we brought some food and money? Fine. Dear Mum, we've got food and money. And we've joined the Yaya Bikes. No, no, this is it's got to stop. I had an uncle run away from home and he joined the army. Although I'm not sure the army would suit my girls. Yeah, Come on, soldiers, look lively, look lively. You think you've got the guts to make it in this man's army? Say yes, sir! I cannot hear you, you maggoty crotch of a dead dog! Say yes, sir! Stand up straight! Shit, just that! Are oh, you a miserable worm? Say no, sir! Do you want to go home to mommy? Are oh, you scared, soldier? Say no, sir! I am going to be waking you up at the break of dawn! Can you hear me, soldiers? Say yes, sir! You'll be grubbing the toilets with your toothbrushes, soldiers! Say yes, sir! I want that toilet bowl so clean I can eat my breakfast up, soldier! Say yes, sir! Come in. Come in. This is Aiden Bacon. Kevin Bacon, do you copy? Over. Kevin Bacon, do you copy? <sighs> Call Ham Bacon. Uh, you know, 
those places, everything topsy-turvy, uh, frogs waiting for princesses to come and kiss them or something. But what princess would want to show up at a place like that? Look, all that happened is I gave those stupid kids a few treats and the police have never let me forget it. <coughs> All I ever did was try and teach Cinderella the value of hard work. Just because she was prettier than my daughters, she thought she never had to do anything. Oh, I ever wanted to be. I ever wanted to get my I don't know, love I don't care if you love All I ever did was come home and find a girl in my bed. <laughs> Hello there, Mr. Wolf. What are you up to? Uh, nothing. I'm just here in the forest being a wolf. <laughs> I'm on my way to Grandma's house with lots of goodies. I've got lots of goodies. I see. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think that Grandma doesn't appreciate my goodies. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm, I'm pretty sure she doesn't. <laughs> maybe I'll see you later at Grandma's house. Uh, well, maybe. <laughs> oh, my. What big eyes you have. All the better to see you with. And what big ears you have. All the better to see you with. And those teeth. Well, what was I supposed to say when she said tea? Oh! Wolf! Wolf! There's a wolf right there! <laughs> I don't know how many times I've told you, Peter, but if you're going to keep crying wolf, and I'm going to feed you to them. <coughs> Look, there is one right there! Climbing. <laughs> Hang on a minute. That's not a wolf. That's a princess. A princess? How do you know it's a princess? I think I should know what a princess looks like. I work for a princess. I, I, I know all things to do with princesses. And she is a princess. And, and I get to do personal care with a princess. Ooh. It's not that romantic. Um, I, while she sleeps, I get to feed her and, and change her catheter. <laughs> so if anyone knows what a princess looks like, it's me. Who are you? Are you a princess too? No! Everyone thinks that. And they keep trying to take you to be a prince. Who is looking for a princess, but I'm not a princess. I'm a, I'm an actress, but I'm never what they're looking for. I'm too, I'm not, you know, pretty enough or slim enough or sexy enough because obviously that is more important than actually acting. I'm too ordinary, I'm too plain, I don't pop, you know. And I'm here because, well, 
with Hannah Bird, who's just performed in The Impossible Dream. What role did you just have, Hannah? My name was Patricia, yes. and I was a drunk actress. And you did very well as a drunk wino. Is that from practice? Yes. Very good. Thank you. That's right. Now, is this your first play in a day? No, it's my third. What, what brings you back to Thrice? Oh, it's... It's just like the people and, and you can go without like a year without seeing these people and you're just best friends and it's the writing um, and the experience, you know, because I'm an actress but this is acting like you've never acted before and it's just amazing. Right. Now, the thing that gets me is how the hell do you remember all those lines in 12 hours? I mean, I can't remember a question, <laughs> let alone minutes and minutes of dialogue. Did, was that scary? How'd you go about that? Uh, it was really scary. Um, I walked in and she said, she handed me the script and she said, I hope you like learning lines. And I didn't get what she meant and I was flipping the page. <laughs> this is pretty tame. Then I opened a page and see all this yellow highlighted and I thought, that's a monologue. So I literally just spoke it over and over and like yelled it into my brain and, and the drunker, well I wasn't actually drunk, but the drunker I sort of played it, the, the better I remembered it funnily enough so I just sort of kept doing it and then just kept yelling out that I'm drunk and it just sort of came to me then the more that you owe, like you keep doing it over and over again I guess that's for me the way to learn lines so yeah so you've been at this since eight o'clock this morning yes. is your adrenaline up or are you always like this um, I got the giggles after the play. When, when, when we got told by Helen that she loved it, especially the drunken rant, I sort of, I got really excited because she's really cool. So I sort of got the giggles. So I'm very so like... You're, you're always like this. I'm, oh, yeah, uh, okay. it's very exhausting. I sleep very well at night. Okay, <laughs> Hannah, thank you for taking time out for Theatre World. Oh, thank you. I'm here with Chris Hodson, author, a writer of the extremely funny Sleeping Jemima. Now, Chris, playing a day, it's not about best and worst. But your play was the best and extremely, oh, <laughs> extremely funny. Yeah. Um, when you were given the, um, the the story last night to write, what made you link fairy tales with with um, play school? I have no idea. Oh, I mean, we on. we uh, we had a meeting with the uh, with the director and the and the cast, and they were throwing ideas of what we could do, this, that, and the other. And to be honest, I thought. Oh, I can't really go with any of this, and I, um, I had a couple of ideas which, which sort of fell in a heap, and really close to midnight, I, I had nothing, and I, and I spoke to a couple of people, and I said, I've done this four times, four times, and this is the worst I've felt, you know, um, and then all of a sudden I was sitting there, and, uh, and all of a sudden. Uh, Play school came into my head for some reason or other. It was Don't a, remember where a from? divine no. intervention, <laughs> divine intervention. <laughs> and uh, and I just sort of thought, you know, the the over friendliness of the people on on shows like Play School, uh, switch them off, switch the camera off, and you know they probably hate one another's guts, you know. So. I just ran with that and then brought Sleeping Beauty into it as well. So there's no television experience? Is that you haven't worked in television? No, you know, that's what happens behind the scenes? Uh, or no, not really. No, yeah. I've not, not done any television work. No, mainly stage. It looked like yeah. you had some inside knowledge, but uh, uh, right, I'll take your word for yeah, it. No, I, that, that's just how I imagined it would be. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alice, are you ready with the musical instruments and the sound effects? Yes, I think so. I missed the rehearsal, but I'll give it my best shot. <laughs> <laughs> No changes there then. Maybe if you could just get a little bit close to the tune, if that's not too much to ask. Why am I a doll again? <laughs> <laughs> because you're good at it. You can be the doll all the time. I was neither trained, you know. Congratulations. You can use Kinkley's legs closed. You don't want to spray to the kids. For a change. Oh. This is when I thought things wouldn't get any more exciting. Shut up! You're a freaking doll! <laughs> <laughs> you are not a train. Okay, so, for tonight's episode, there's going to be a few special parts. <coughs> Since Gloria is away with the flu, I'll be filling in for those parts. Is it convenient that Gloria and John are both away together? Oh, the jolly green giant. Envy raises up its ugly head, and I mean <coughs> ugly. <laughs> if the urge comes over you to go and get knotted, don't fight it. Okay, okay, that's about enough getting into character. So, <laughs> and please try to look as 
as if you're enjoying yourself. Especially you, Bernard, you miserable looking bag of shut. <laughs> I don't want too many retakes, so I need to get this right from the first time. Next time I want to be Big Ted. <laughs> <laughs> Next year for our ninth annual Planner Day, the last Friday and Saturday of February in 2015. Again, for the final time, thank you very much. Put your hands together. I hope you have a great day. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode of Theatre World and uh, the end of Play in a Day. It's been a whirlwind 24 hours and uh, I hope you enjoyed all the plays that we've filmed today. And thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you next time. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>